Uh, pretty big news that's happening just now, everyone. A, uh, it's just come up on my Facebook on a couple of different people's pages and has been reported by a couple of different uh, websites just now saying that Calumet US has just instantly filed for bankruptcy. Um, or or in, the U in the US it's saying declared Chapter 7 bankruptcy, which pretty much means liquidation, which means all the shops closing and effectively saying it's in... It's got shitloads of debt and it hasn't been paying it back fast enough. Uh, it's not even got to the point where it's been able to pay off the interest rates and then people are just saying, right, you're not even going to be able to be a shop uh, and we're going to start using the stuff which is in your shops to pay off your debts. Uh, so oh, that's that's a bad move. That, that's a shocker. And seemingly it was a shock surprise. Well, not so much a shock, but it was a sudden like, bang, we're not open today. And even the employees aren't able to get into the shops to uh, to pick up. Like, let's say you you work in an office every day. Maybe you leave your laptop and your favourite cuddly toy in there or something like that. They're not able to get into the shops because they're, they're effectively locked up. Um, just shocking behaviour by major companies and the way it treats its uh, its staff. It really is shit. Um, just checking, uh, so at the moment, this is just the US uh, side of Calumet, but uh, do you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if it's coming to the UK version of it as well, or certainly the European version of it. Hold on, let me just see if I can find another comment about it. In fact, there's seemingly it's closed so fast that there's people that so uh, potential silver lining. People that have taken gear out on rental yesterday didn't have a shop to take it back to today. So that's that's kind of like oh, and they're saying somebody's even got one of the medium format cameras out on a demo, which let's just say that's around about a twenty grand worth of stuff. Ooh, that could be a. Nice little thing. Anyway, uh, apart from, so I would say, if you want to read out uh, what's going on here and what's happening and everyone's kind of really confused and just going, what's going on here, check out Petapixel and Wooza's SLR Lounge are both, they're, everyone's kind of, uh, all the websites are checking out. I'll put the links to them down below. Um, and uh, they're actually having a Calumet employee saying, uh, yeah, we don't really know what's going on. But what he does say, uh, there's some great information here, just saying, yeah, what happened is all the... All the suppliers like Nikon and Fuji and Sony and all that started to not give us gear to try and sell, which you kind of think, what's going on there? So what happens is as a camera store, uh, the majority of camera stores don't actually buy cameras. Um, they, their, their shop may have lots of cameras in it, but what they say is, Sony, give us your stuff. Once we sell it, we'll give you back the money. Um, and what's happening is a lot of times the camera companies will give it to the uh, the shops and then the shops if they don't sell it well then there, there's an interest payment on the the value of the stuff which they would have uh, been having in their store as well because then like Sony still needs to make money on, on stuff which even if it hasn't sold straight away they would have to get the interest on it a bit of confusing mass going on there and it may be different different companies and different uh, countries but that's generally how uh, I've been known to do it so the only ones which I do know that do buy cameras are the little kind of mom and pop stores, as, as uh, Americans would call it, that uh, buy cameras off photographers that have already used stuff, like second-hand stores, are probably the only ones that actually own the equipment in there and actually have, I, I would be, there's a tiny little shop in Edinburgh called Camera Attics, which has uh, got loads of second-hand cameras in there. I reckon that tiny little shop, which is about the same size as this room here, probably has greater stock value than uh, the massive Calumet store in Edinburgh, which is a giant warehouse. But the thing is, I wouldn't be surprised if this happens in the UK as well, because uh, recently, Jessips, which was the other camera company, um, there was Jessips, there was Jacobs, um, and there's even stuff like you know, Dixon's and Comet, which of all of them have disappeared. There's nowhere on my high street where I can go and have a fiddle with cameras anymore. If you look at some of my past videos, uh, I've gone into a camera shop, taken the camera outside, taken some videos and photos of the street and done analysis of the kind of image quality there and then. But uh, now there's nowhere for me to do that, apart from if I go to a second-hand store. Or the only other place would be uh, Tesco's. Uh, or Tesco, yeah, pretty much Tesco's is the only place that's got a couple of cameras. But they're just point-and-shoots cameras. There's nowhere really kind of professional that to go. The the, Jess, the Calumet store in Edinburgh is still around. Um, 
But do you know what? It's actually been over a year since I was last in there. The staff and all that are absolutely fine, but the store itself, I found they changed the layout in there and it's just, it's not very inviting. It's really weird. And from what they're saying, the, the Calumet, the US Calumet employees saying here is that, yeah, we started to not have that much stock. That's kind of what's happening in the Calumet shop in Edinburgh. Certainly any time I had gone in there recently, I've walked in and gone, oh, there's nothing here, right, I'm off out. Uh, and, and also, it, it, the, for some reason, they've cleared it in the middle of the shop, where normally they'd be like, uh, not stalls, but um, uh, units that you could walk around and all that kind of stuff, so you could weave your way without having to go straight for direct eye contact with a staff member. Now it just seems to be like an open room with a couple of bits on the wall, flashes and umbrellas over there, a couple of lenses over there, staff, staff, staff staring at you as you walk in and you kind of walk in and go you know sometimes there's a whole case of I like to have a little wander and have a little look at things and pick things up and without having somebody going ah we have a new person in the shop so I, I've kind of felt felt uncomfortable going into uh, the only camera shop in Edinburgh uh, which is a bit of a shocker so personally I think this is going to be spreading pretty fast to other companies but what I do think is that this is such shocking behaviour by uh, massive companies. Um, I, I myself was in a company uh, five, six, seven, eight years ago in Japan, which everyone was working there, no problem, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, sorry guys, you don't have a job. Uh, excuse me, what? Uh, we were walking in and they're saying, yeah, the company's gone completely into administration, uh, none of you have a job. We were like going, uh, uh, what, what, what do we do? Uh, and it's such a massive kind of like, Everything's normal, everything's normal. Oh my God, your job's gone, everything's destroyed. You're like, oh! The worst thing was, that was a job which I had over in Japan. And uh, I, fortunately, I'd been there for a full year. I'd had the full contract. I'd pretty much done everything. I was only going to be there for about another four or five weeks. So it wasn't a big deal for me. However, they were still employing people from America, from Europe, from Britain, and flying them over just the week before the company went under. So people would be coming out going, oh, I've got no money, but don't worry, I've got a job. This will be great. And they get there and a week later they go, you don't even have a company to work for. Good luck. And that was it. It was an absolute short. That was Nova, Nova Company, Nova Corp, uh, an uh, English teaching company over there. And uh, that was just shocking behaviour. And I thought, maybe that's just kind of Japan, but it seems like even in the US here as well. So my my and and do you know what? There was a couple of times when we where there were the signs of that ha of the company going under when we look back at it of you know sometimes our pay was a bit late or some people didn't get their pay and there's getting mix ups in the pay structure um or some people were going oh sorry we thought you took twenty days uh, sick pay last month and people were going no I didn't what are you on about and there's always like oh there's a glitch in the system. And it seems like that's what was happening here. It's like people uh, were like, oh, we didn't get paid this week. Oh, there's a glitch. It's going to uh, get sorted out next year or next month or something. So I would say if you're in any company, and which is a big company, which deals with stock, which is very, uh, what do you call it, market dependable. So in other words, if, if the market's going up or down, uh, if it doesn't sell stock, it's screwed. And if all of a sudden one month you're not, getting your pay right on the dot, get, get, get involved with figuring out what's happening with the company and then start looking at other companies uh, favourably, uh, is what I would say. Just, just, it is a... Uh, and, and do you know what? I, I see if the company went bust, but it'd been giving out warnings. That that would be fine. It's the, it's the shock factor of everything's fine, and, and the, the other shitty thing is, imagine you are a photographer that you rent your gear for weddings or something like that. I, I, I've i done that a few times with Calumet in the UK, but imagine I'm going, right, I've got a wedding this weekend, cool, uh, all my other camera gear's away somewhere else, I, I need to uh, rent stuff, cool, I'll rent for Calumet, go in, can I rent your stuff on Saturday? Yeah, not a problem! go in on the Friday morning, yeah, don't worry, you can pick it up tomorrow, not a problem, and then the next day, it's closed, and I can't get my stuff, and I've got a wedding to shoot. What a shitter. What an absolute... Uh, uh, you know, if they said, I wouldn't do that, because I think it's not going to go down too well, that would be absolutely fine, but 
uh, it's, uh, it's bad practice for both staff, employees, and also its customers, which really ruins the uh, customer, not so much customer loyalty, because that's gone, you have no customers when you, you're not a company, but customer um, belief in, in uh, your industry. So in other words, whenever uh, the Japanese uh, company I was working for, which was an English teacher, pretty much the market fell out of every English company, every English teaching company in Japan, because everyone was like, I, I don't really want to give a thousand pounds to this English teacher just in case all of a sudden he's bankrupt as well. You know, even if you're not related to the major company that we were dealing with. And it's kind of the same with this now. It's like, oh man, so many companies are just instantly gone. Not, oh, we're filing for bankruptcy. We'll be closing in a month. This is, we're filing for bank bankruptcy. You can't get in. Uh, so I, I just think... Just think uh, it now screws it for other companies as well. So maybe there's like LensRental.com or other companies, which I wouldn't be surprised if other companies are kind of going, uh, or other like people are just kind of going, I uh, don't really want to put all my eggs in one basket here. So it's, it's just a bad, bad moves by major companies uh, dealing with with clients all the time. There's a great point also uh, in the article by Petapixel, which they're talking to one of the Calumet employees, just saying that Calumet as a store uh, bought a couple of extra stores around the place. They were smaller companies, and they just bought them up, and uh, it's good to spread your, your your the size of your company all over the place. But they're saying whenever they bought the little stores, they had no stock for them, and they were expecting people to just kind of go in and go, uh, yeah, can I get this kind of camera? And they would order it in then. Which, straight away, you're kind of going, why can't we get gear in the stores? But also the fact is, what is the point of having a store if you're not having gear for people to use, play with, touch? It's a bit like having a perfume store where you walk in and they go, hello, what perfume would you like to buy? And you go, there's nothing in here. Uh, can, I, I, I want to kind of know what I'm buying first. Can I, can I smell some perfumes? No, but you can order the perfume if you want. Right, where to order that? Call this number. But I'm in the store just now. Can can I just buy it now? No, you need to buy it from the phone line or some shit like that. It really is a, a weird concept of what is the point of having an actual bricks and mortar store if you're not going to have gear for people to touch, fiddle, play with, use and go, oh, I do like it. Or at least go, oh, no, I don't like it. But thank you very much for having the for letting me have the experience of trying it out. I'll be down here again next time when there's a camera, which I do think I want to try out. Just, just shit business practices. It really is. If it was me, if 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 it was my, let's say I won the lottery uh, next month, uh, I would I would I would like to have something like a little camera store, but with gear in it. And the thing is, what I would have is so that people can come in. And there isn't a sales presence in there. As in, I'd like it to be filled with photographers. We are there for enhancing other people's photography experience. Not, we've got to sell you something straight away. And, and I, th I think that's something which I've, I've touched on in the past before. Is that, uh, certainly in YouTube videos or something, that if you try to sell me something, I will distrust you. If you try and entertain me or educate me, I will promote you. I will be like, yeah, I'll buy your stuff. This sounds great. Thank you very much. I will be a loyal follower, a loyal user, and I will talk about you in a positive way, not going, oh, I just went to that shop. God, they try and sell me everything. So, yeah, yeah, I just... I just think there's there's the opportunity for good stores and which also do better marketing. Like Calumet's marketing, I can't say is wonderful. Uh, it's not something that's like they, they give it a little magazine every so often. I haven't had one for a wee while. Mm, maybe that says something. Um, and the magazine's like a, a nice little kind of camera porn magazine, which oh look at this new camera. But even in in hold on. <coughs> no, I. I the, the most recent one is the winter 2013, which I've had, which is still lovely, glossy magazine. But what, and, and it's a lot of like selling uh, at the moment, 
uh, kind of courses going on, which is absolutely fine. Um, but what I find that, and it's good, it's a good magazine, and I, I, I fully support their magazine, they have good articles and stuff like that, um, some of it which I think is a little bit recycled from other stuff which I've seen, but the amount of things which I see are that are just kind of mistakes or editing faults in that, like seeing how many megapixels a certain camera's got, or how many frames a second they've got, or which camera does video, and all that kind of stuff, the number of mistakes which are within this, Maybe it's just because I'm a camera geek, or but at the same time, lots of people will be going, right, I'm spending £1,200 on this camera, I want to know all the details about it. I sometimes think, it's it's a bit, kind of, too many mistakes going on uh, in this camera, uh, in this magazine, so I don't know, like, it is cool, and, and it is like, oh, I love looking at all the camera gear stuff. Um, so I can't really fault it on, you know, that that's my nice... Camera porn magazine, which I get every so often for free, um, but at the same time when I go into the store, there's barely any gear in there at all. And at the same time when I do go in the store, if there is gear, it's in a box behind a shelf, behind a, a, a what do you call them? Not a customer, uh, a a worker, uh, staff. Uh, so it's not it's not a case of like walking around. Oh, pick up a camera, mm, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. No, don't like it. Find another camera, fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Oh, too heavy. Don't like that one. Fiddle. Oh, this one feels just right. It's a case of, uh, hi. Do you have the Nikon D four? You do. Uh, okay. Can 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 I can I see it before I buy it? Uh, I I don't know if I want to just give you five thousand pounds. I I'd like to have a test of it. And unless Nikon is actually going around doing camera things, you know, like camera displays or demos where people can come along and have a fiddle with their cameras, unless you're getting to one of those which happens maybe once every six months in your city, if even that, then it's a case of, oh, buy it, I have to actually physically buy it, get it posted to me, fiddle with it, feel it, go, actually no, it's not what I like, and then it's all the cost of getting rid of it again. Just, uh, just, I, I'm not surprised these companies are going under, but at the same time, with so many camera companies going under, you think lessons would be getting learnt, or that at least the demand would be going, oh, it's for these five different camera companies, oh, four of them have gone, all the demands on this camera company. But they're so not that nice, or not that great, or not that well promoted that ever, that it just dies as well. The only way that you're going to get cameras in the future, in the very near future, is either second-hand stores, or buying it online, getting it shipped and sent to you, having to play with it, and then going, no, I don't like it, and sending it back. That's a bit of a shit future. Let me know what you think, and tell me how you think you would change the shopping experience that we get at the moment, and the marketing experience as well, because I think all these companies, which are all about, you know, marketing, just suck ass, big, big style. Anyway, just my thoughts, let you know, bye bye.